Cigar Company is your one-stop shop for all your cigar needs. Whether that's a brand new humidor, a box of those new cigars you've been waiting for, a top-of-the-line cutter or lighter, a place to enjoy the finest cigars and spirits with friends, or the only cigars grown right here in the Sunshine State, we've got you covered. Come visit one of our retail locations for the ultimate cigar experience. Visit us online at coronacigar.com. How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Corona Cigar Studios for episode 240 of How About That Cigar Live. Thank you so much for watching live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, X, X TikTok all, soon, TikTok soon, hopefully. So uh, thank you guys for watching so much. Take a minute, if you would, please, as you can see on the screen right now, click smash. on the beautiful subscribe buttons, smash the bell so you never miss anything we have going on. And if you're listening after the fact on the audio podcast, thank you so much for making How About That Cigar a part of your regular audio podcast rotation here in the Corona Cigar Studios. Um, I think it, we are in desperate need of Justy Smoke. What? Sure, I know. Bring him in. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on in here. Right, I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Am I here? Wait. You're here. Where are we? You're gone. We're, you're, in, you're in a tobacco field somewhere. I'm oh, here. It looks yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, in, I'm gone. I'm I, here. I, I don't know where I'm at, but I'm here. Uh, that is in that tobacco field is in Esteli, Nicaragua. I've always wanted to go there. So glad I made it finally. <laughs> um, all right. So NFL draft is three weeks away. 18 days. 18 days away. 17, 18 days. Um, the Twins are off to a mediocre start. My Yankees are off to a wonderful start. Best thing about that is they swept the Houston Astros for the we first like four games. <clears throat> Can United sponsor Raul's mustache? Absolutely. I like that. Cannot wait for I that. I love that idea, Oliver. Um, uh, the, so the Twins are playing the Dodgers as we speak. I, I'm not keeping track of the score. If anybody would be so kind, you know, put some occasional well, live scoring updates it, in the comments. That'd isn't be awesome. there a little basketball game going on tonight, too? Uh, the Wolves don't play tonight. How about the National Championship? Oh, the National Championship. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I wish I followed college basketball more closely but i don't so if anybody wants to uh there's, there's this know, little team called updated. connecticut that's playing yeah wait that's a cigar isn't it this is a cigar is that a and cigar it, this, let me just show you what it is <laughs> where is it it's this one right here bandolero bandolero okay there we go we like it we like it a lot it's very good and then my second one is the black bomb i'm gonna be smoking after this one Nice. This is a fabulous, a wonderful for Minnesota winners. Um, Justy, what are you smoking? Oh, I'm drinking a hops water too, by the way. Um, I'm all backwards here today. Yeah. Just got a La Gianna there tonight with a uh, 1919. 1919. That's that's all Justin ever drinks. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what I bring here. Creature habit. Yes. Uh, I'm finishing my pregame cigar, but I'll toast up my cigar in a few minutes in the uh, during the toast cam. Uh, Timberwolves. Oh, we're going back to them. Well, we're they're not off. going back. We ju you just went forward a little, a little too quick. Well, they're off. So I thought we were done talking about Timberwolves. Aren't off. Well, they're not playing off tonight. They're yeah. not playing right now. Yeah. But I'm saying there's still four games left in the season, and uh, they're tied with Denver for first right now. So they can go either first or third. Or, or, basically. Yeah. Okay. The worst they can do is third. Yeah. So there's f yeah four is games that, left in the regular season. Is that just in their division or is that no? Overall? That's in the overall in in the, the conference. Ooh, conference. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry, division. Division. Um, what are they in the conference then? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Um, Minnesota Wild. So this is weird. I thought the Minnesota Wild were like officially eliminated from playoff contention. I thought they were too. So they pretty much are, but. Uh, like mathematically, there is still like an eclipse level series of weirdness that could happen to get to wild, uh, uh, the last wild card spot. I see what you just did there. See what I did I there? Did. I, yeah. I, I caught that. Hey, are you a zombie? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Are you a zombie? Nobody turned no. into zombies today? No. no. The government reason, again my, overthrown. My water went off for some reason out of nowhere during the eclipse today. So that was weird. But yeah. We got it back up and running within 20 minutes when we had somebody come out. So weird stuff. Yeah. Weird. Just weird. Yeah. Um, and the basically the wild have to win. There's five games left 
for the Wild in the regular season. The Wild have to win all five of those games, and I think there's three other teams that have to have a very particular set of wins and losses in order for to get the Wild over the top into that last wild card spot in the NHL playoffs. I just don't think it's going to happen. No, it's they're it's they're it's not. I think you got a better chance of winning, you know, the Powerball like somebody in I think Oregon won the won the Powerball uh this weekend. Mm. Um so yeah, that's it. What uh, are but you drinking there? Let's uh yeah, I'm drinking this week's uh Spirit of Mystery. Who's that brought to us by? I know, right? Spirit of Mystery brought to us by our friends at Postania Cigars. Do you find yourself unsatisfied with the top 10 list from How About That Cigar? Are you wondering how cigars from Postania didn't make the HBTC list but found their way onto other lists? Well, fortunately, you can be reminded every week with this Postania Cigars advertisement. Postania Cigars, the number one unranked cigar in the industry. <laughs> I, lo- I still like I still our, that our guest me is laugh. like sitting in the background, just ear to ear, yeah, grinning at that. I just I, it uh, makes me laugh every time. All right, I think, so I think he wants a segment like that. This smells like a Kentucky bourbon. Kentucky. I think it smells like Kentucky bourbon. It smells. It's bourbon. It's bourbon. Yes, it is a bourbon. Um, like a, it, I gave a few like aroma notes before the show, like vanilla, oak, classic little, bourbon smells. Yeah, a little butterscotch. Um. Little caramel, little little bit of funk, but not not really too much. So the odds of you guessing this is none. Ooh, just just shot him down. Like I that. like that. Yeah, yeah, just shot me down. Didn't like even give him a chance. No, there's no, no way he's gonna guess this one. All right, so first taste. Prove him wrong, Matt. Prove it him wrong. tastes pretty good. The it color works. the color is a little bit light, but not super light. Uh, it's got good legs, good aroma. And, and the funny thing is, he's thing. drank this before. Oh, he it's has. got it's got decent texture, but it's a little thin. It's 90. 90 proof. Yeah, it's medium proof. It doesn't, it's not super hot. It doesn't put hair It does chest. have kind of a, it has a very strong, um, woodsy, um, lot of charred oak on this one. Does it so, taste familiar? You've drank this. It tastes house. familiar, but I can't really, I don't know. I get, it's, it's a really a lot of that campfire charred oak kind of thing. So, We'll uh, reveal later on in the show right. what the spirit of mystery is. Let's get our special guest onto the show. And as always on How About That Cigar Live, special guest brought to us by our friends at Drew Estate. Following the resounding success of Black & Cigars M81 Maduro, Drew Estate announced the new blackened S84 Shade to Black. Wrapped in a luxurious Connecticut Ecuador cover leaf, the experience of this expression is distinctly different from the original M81 Maduro while still retaining its foundational qualities due to the Connecticut broadleaf Maduro binder and the filler leaves from Pennsylvania and Nicaragua. Presented in elegantly designed 20 count boxes, blackened S84 shade to black by Drew Estate is available in Robusto, Toro, Corona Doble, and Corona. For more information, please visit DrewEstate.com. Ladies and gentlemen, help us out, please. If you would, put your hands together. Welcome back to How About That Cigar Live from United Cigars, Oliver Naveau. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you guys. Man, that's a that's a great, great little intro. New music? Yep. When, yeah. When we got start, got like new that. stuff. I put that together myself. <laughs> oh, you got that little 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 Latin vibe. Mm. That's a great ad, too, by the way. I, I haven't. I told you guys, but that's that's a classic. I give credit to Mike <laughs> to Mike from Cigar Hustler and Postania Cigars. He I, I only made Clever. a couple tiny little tweaks to it, but that was that was all him. So because he basically trolls us and gives us crap that we didn't review any of his cigars this past year, so he didn't make the list. And I was like, hey, I, I don't know what to tell you. He's like, all right, I'm gonna do an ad with you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna basically use the ad to troll you guys. And I said, okay, that sounds like a blast. Let's do it. Oliver, what are you smoking and drinking tonight, brother? Uh, I'm smoking the Red Anchor. This is our, our Gunner uh, size. So that's a six and a half by 43. Um, this is one that I blended with Hendrick at KBF. And um, just one that I've been, I've been smoking quite a bit of. It just kind of hits hits my palate, right? Um, you know, we used to use some of their family tobacco. Um, so you're really proud of it and uh, and happy. It's been doing, doing well for us. And then I'm drinking... Uh, I'm drinking, I guess, Massachusetts finest uh, from the White Cap Mountains, uh, filtered 
<laughs> in these membranes that are encased <laughs> in uh, Chinese plastic, <laughs> filtered, and then run into a bottle that is then placed into a soda stream. And these small size bubbles are forced into <laughs> this uh, this this glacier water, and it's just fantastic. So, so what you're saying is you got some water with gas. I got some water with gas. You, yeah. you, you. Honestly, that that pitch makes me want to buy that water so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's fantastic. It's good stuff. Well, I'm uh, I'm gonna fire up a uh, little some of the new new with the uh the yes, united Cigars, connecticut uh so i'm gonna get that going right now uh, and then we'll jump into questions but i'm gonna fire this up on the zycar toast cam zycar is the leading accessory brand with innovative innovative butane lighters precision cutting cigar instruments travel cases and humidors each product is designed and manufactured with utmost precision and attention to detail the result is a range of products that exude quality and refinement, reflecting the brand's dedication to excellence. For more information, please visit Zycar.com. And there we go. All toasted up and ready to go. Yeah, that uh, that United Connecticut was just released at the PCA this year. Absolutely. And speaking of the PCA, um, even though we had our big PCA recap show last week, still, we're just curious from you. We did... Uh, check in with you uh, uh, for a short interview at the PCA trade show. But, uh, you know, now that the dust has settled after the, the show's all over, uh, give us kind of the 30,000-foot 30, view how everything went for you guys. Um, it was, you know, this was an interesting show for us. Well, one, it was it was good across the board. Uh, you know, always always great seeing, you know, faces that you don't get to see too often. Um, so it was it was a successful show for us. What was interesting, though, is last year we we expanded our footprint at the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so United and Selected Tobacco, kind of, you know, first it was United Cigars and then Selected Tobacco was in the booth. Then it turned into Selected Tobacco got a larger booth and we were inside the booth uh, because United Cigars distributes the Atabay, Byron, Bandolero uh, lines. And then then it turned into, you know, United Cigars was was expanding um nelson with his his you know genius and madness was expanding so we got a, a larger footprint last year and then this year uh unfortunately nelson was not at the show uh he had to back out of the pca last year during the pca um he couldn't select his booth for the for this year's show because spain had kind of changed some laws where he had to reapply for a visa mm -hmm. it was going to take about a year or so uh he couldn't you know commit to a booth that was now moved ahead, right? It wasn't in July anymore. We, we just had it in March. And um, so we didn't have selected tobacco booth and we didn't have, unfortunately, didn't even have Nelson Alfonso. Uh, he couldn't make the trip. So uh, that part, that part was interesting. Um, you know, a little easier to manage on my part uh, as opposed to, you know, jumping into selected tobacco, which is a 40 by 50 booth, then back into our booth, which is a, you know, 20 by 30. So it's a big, you know, it's a big footprint for the two two companies. But overall, it was great. Uh, we released the La Giana 30th anniversary. So celebrating, a, you know, big, uh, big accomplishment for, for La Giana uh, to kind of, you know, be around that long. So we did a, uh, I wanted, I wanted something special for that, you know, obviously for the 30th. And La Giana is a, is a line that is uh, made in Honduras. We have a natural and a Maduro, and then we released the Angelic line, which is a sweet tip uh, line a couple of years ago. So, you know, figuring out how do we do a 30th that can kind of embody the entire line. So, um, you know, re reblended it just a, just a little bit and then uh, just did a, a barber pole with an Ecuadorian Habano and uh, Mexican San Andres wrappers. And uh, so you see the two, you know, the two tobaccos dancing on the outside and uh, updated the the packaging once again, just to have uh, you know nice nice gold band, golden bands, and uh, and a golden box. So that was that's a limited release, but that uh, that was our one of our big releases for the show. And then of course you're smoking the the United Connecticut. Oh yeah. Uh, so that's that's an expansion of our of our current line of United. So we have the Habano, the Maduro, and now the uh, the Connecticut is coming yeah, this, out. This is my first time smoking the Connecticut since bringing this. Uh, Home from the trade show and it's starting out really nice well really, matt, really creamy really smooth matt tobacco was giving all kinds of praise to your uh 30 year anniversary 
yeah, that was that was humbling. He came up to me. We um, so we we had I don't even want to say sponsored, right? But we had we wanted to support the the women of PCA, the event that the PCA held um, on the last day of the show, just to celebrate the the women of the industry. And we put together a, a little uh, gift bag for the well, for the first twenty five, but then we also provided cigars. But we uh, partnered up with McAllo Cigars on that as well. So we both provided a cigar. We put in our La Gianna 30th and then some skincare products uh, as well. And um, and that was a big hit. But I you know I say that because Matt Tobacco actually came up to me because Nicole, his wife, was smoking one and uh, that I'd given them both uh, I think the day before, and he didn't have his on him and uh he said nicole's bugging me she's saying it's it's fantastic and then i need to smoke he's like i don't usually do this but uh, i hate asking for another one but do you have one and you know just reached into my pocket and got him another one so yeah it was it was that was that, that just means it means a ton um yeah you know i've been in this industry for a long time on retail wholesale you know all aspects and um to be able to put a cigar together like the La Giana 30th and then just having someone come up and, you know, saying that someone's raving about it and they, they wanted to smoke it right at that moment. It's uh yeah, it's humbling. He said it was box worthy. Yeah. That's, that's big. That's huge. Especially, especially coming from that cheap ass. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. He is, he is so far from a cheap ass. Mm. I see them. They, they eat out. They do well. They do oh well. yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so, so is that salmon or is it pink? It is. It is. It is salmon. Yeah, salmon. yeah, we'll call it. We'll call it salmon. Salmon. Just, I like yeah, salmon. Not some a, not some say coral. Some some say coral. That it's, is close. Well, Can you pull him back up. Let's let's get a close up on him. Not, not so much sockeye. Sock the Atlantic. <laughs> Atlantic <laughs> salmon. There you go. I'll give I'll give him that. I'll give him that. I like it. <laughs> so, yeah. one of the things that, um, you know, I, I love talking to you about stuff like this because you like you mentioned you have experience in a lot of different sections of the industry with premium cigars you know from retail wholesale um you know brand management you know uh blending now blending a lot of different you know areas so one of the things i'm curious about is you know when, when we talk about brick and mortar shops around the country you know and specifically for us because we really um, at, at least for us here and how about that cigar, we really just have experience with shops, you know, inside the U S. Um, so for the shop, for the brick and mortar shops out there in, in your experience over the years, that those shops that you can look, look at them today and even look at them before and say, these are the shops that do it best. What, what are those shops doing not only to sell a lot of cigars, but also to grow the cigar hobby in for their new cigar consumers. I think from from my experience, what, what I what I enjoy there, there's almost a transition in a way back to the hospitality side and the tobacconist, the, like a true tobacconist side. Um, where for a while it was, there were, there were hobbyists um, that were getting into, into the business and that, and that's great, but they may have come from a different industry and outside of even hospitality. Um, so they weren't, they weren't used to the interaction. They weren't used to um, how to, you know, interact with, with customers or, or keep things interesting. So seeing a lot of these, these lounges and, and cigar retailers are, are really investing a lot of their, a lot of money uh, and a lot of their time into into the business. Um, you can really see that the the lounges are becoming more upscale. Um, ventilation is a, is a big. Uh, that seems like that's one of the one of the larger investments in these uh, in these lounges because they want to make it comfortable to attract not only the the male consumers but for a long time um, it was male male dominated. Now we're starting to see a, another segment of the market you know, coming in and, um, you know, both men and women are bringing their significant others into the lounge and they don't want that, you know, that stale smoke lingering. So the ventilation is a big part. So I, I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of shops are going more towards the hospitality side uh, of the business and, and keeping the educational portion um, of the business alive as well. Yeah, I agree. Air quality, I agree 100%. 
and also on the the education piece, but the hospitality piece that you mentioned that that really sticks out to me because you can tell when you're at a shop where the owner and proprietor not only if they're if that person happens to be there at the shop when you're there, but if they also took the time to train their their employees properly who are working the humidor and working the shop, that they train them how to how to be a part of a hospitality business that, and I really appreciate that you said that the cigars are, it's, it's not just ringing the register and helping somebody grab the cigars out of the humidor. It's, it's, it really is, uh, you know, almost equated to, you know, uh, a really quality cocktail lounge or restaurant where they know how to do hospitality first. And then the rest, um, is, I won't say just sort of naturally falls into place, but they, they do the first thing first, which is hospitality. Right. No, it's a, it's a big, it's a big piece of, of the business. If you're like there and there's, there's, there's a lounge for everyone. If someone is looking for more of that, you know, that Denny's IHOP, right. Style where it's not necessarily, you know, the hospitality side and being catered to and taken care of and sitting in, you know, leather chairs or, um, you know, having a nice uh, bar set up. If they're just looking for a, a spot to smoke, there there are spots like that, and that that works. But if if that's the business you're going towards, you can't then complain that uh, business isn't growing because you're not attracting a certain segment of you know our very tiny market, right? But yeah. the more hospitality you you know more hospitality and the more um, more you cater to the to the customer. Um, you know, the, the bigger dollars that, uh, that will come in and, uh, they will be more frequent, you know, frequently coming in because they have a place to, to stay, visit, um, and network. I mean, the lounges are, are really a networking, um, spot mm-hmm. if anything. So if you want to bring business men and women into, into your lounges, then yeah, you have to, you have to cater to them. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of lean towards the lounges that when you, as soon as you walk in there, you feel like family. Huh. There's some that you feel like, ah, oh, maybe this spot ain't for me. You know, for whatever, maybe, maybe it's the cigar selection. Maybe it's the guys in the corner playing poker. Maybe it's the the back tobacconist. Or maybe it's you that day. Um, yeah. But I usually go to one's a guy, hey, how you doing? Come on in here. Yeah. How, what's your name? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What do you like to smoke? Not just, hey, the humidor is over there. Go ahead. Pick out what you want. Yeah. It's gotta be, what do you like to smoke? What are you, what are you here for? You know? Yeah. Stuff right. And that's, that. that's where the, enter, that's where the hospitality side comes yep. in. That's the entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, catering to that person, making them feel comfortable. Um, it's yeah, it's not, and it's not, it's not easy, you know, for some, they might have the hospitality, you know, background or, or they know how to, um, you know, create an environment, but they don't know how to interact. Right. Like in, in hotels, there are, there are the executives that are behind in the in the offices, but then there's the front desk. There's the you know the people that are that are on the floor daily, and they they know how to interact. Yeah. So this next question I have is is kind of on the on the sales and brand management side of things, you know, because you know so many different product categories, and whether we're talking about you know spirits or cigars or. Um, I mean, really just about any consumable, I guess, sort of product. Um, But cigar shops are a different, sort of a different animal because like we talked about that hospitality element to the shops and the community element to the people that get together and smoke. um, that, That can sometimes make a difference as far as the way, first of all, the way that you sign an account and second of all, the way that you keep an account after it's signed. So that's I uh, that kind of gets down to the meat of my question which is in your experience once you sign an account what's like the key factor in keeping it? That uh, that's got that's got so many layers to it. Uh, the obvious right answer to it is is the communication and and you know staying in touch. But you know the product the product, you know, is important and then keeping it relevant. It's, you know, anytime you're opening an account, um, you know, and I'll say for us, we're, 
we're a boutique company. So people aren't necessarily kicking down the doors for the United Connecticut, right? Um, they're coming in for the, the ones that are either advertising or, um, you know, they're getting, getting good, good play in, um, you know, with reviews or, you know, they're advertising somewhere. It's just, it's, it's brand recognition. Yeah. Um, and we're still, we're still building towards that. So for us to keep an account, we have to do, I don't want to say do a little bit more, but we have to, you know, in some ways stay, stay relevant. And, you know, for, for United, I tried to come up with interesting, um, events for, for retailers. Um, I don't even like calling them events. It's just, you know, we try to be a little more interactive. Mm. Um, you know, we did one with football squares this year where we sponsored a, a you know, a squares board. So there would be, you know, the, the retailer would buy in, they have a football squares board and then every quarter we're giving away uh, product. And then we, um, we, we sponsored it by helping the retailer give a gift certificate back to the store. So, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't only for United products. We hope that if the, the person who wins the, the squares board, they're taking that five, it was a $500 gift card. So we hope that they would take that gift card and then buy United products, but we're not, we're not forcing the person who won the customer who wants to buy United. We're not forcing the retailer to say that's only for United. We're trying to bring that back so that the retailer has a customer that has $500 and they're bringing it back to, to the store. Um, you know, doing that instead of, you know, maybe some of the swag and lighters cutters, um, you know, that's, that's part of the retailer's revenue. So yeah. we, you know, we try to stay away from that. Um, so I guess, you know, in, you know, to kind of, you know, wrap up that answer for you, um, communications key, um, mm. you know, just staying on, staying on top of them the best we can and, and trying to, you know, think of creative ways to help them, um, keep the product in front of the customer. So how do you, how do your two brands select tobacco and United, how do they compare, not compare with each other? How do they complement each other in shops? Because we've we've talked about this a little bit before, yeah. When I was on your team for a, a year, um, explain that a little bit. That was first of all, that was a great year. That was <laughs> it, it was it was good. Yeah, yeah. It was, was learning lear me too. Yeah, that was you know learning learning experience, right? I mean, you're should, getting should into we tell, it. You, should we tell yeah. tell these guys how you set me up? <laughs> sure. Cool. I so, bet you guys are going to have different versions of this story. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was at working at the booth for them, and there was a certain customer I think he's dealt with before. Oh, from a certain region of of the world, which thought I have money, I want the all the all the best all the, stuff. All the best stuff yeah. right now. I have money, and I'm like, he's dealt with. Give him the Ramos. Give him the Ramos. So he comes over, and I spend the next half an hour trying to explain to him. If you want Atta Bay, Byron, we have to have a – it's a team. We have to – you know, you have to get United in there. No, I have money now. I want now. <laughs> and I see him in the corner just let's, put a smile on his let's, face. Let's get to know each other first before yeah. we jump into bed. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you set me up on purpose to have me learn yeah. or you just didn't want to deal with that. But it's Yeah, look, it's, there's, a, there's a learning curve. Our, our portfolio is interesting, yes. right? For, for United Cigars, we have – over 25 different lines and then within the lines right there are different um there are different blends and then within the blends there are different skews so over you know well over 200 200 skews so we we manufacture cigars and then we distribute for selected tobacco we distribute for our manufacturer uh, mahio cubana which is jose dominguez high tower yaya yeah. um, and we also distribute for arnold andre who they just became part of pro cigar this year Nice. Or, or last year so that was a big that was a big jump for them um and that's the montosa terra nova so in the portfolio and not really setting you up but um uh, you know for people to understand um you know we're fortunate as a company right now to have um really you know the, the main one i would say is is adabay where now it's starting to be recognized where when I started with the company in 2016, I was I was walking into shops and and nobody knew the name, uh, nobody wanted to to spend that much for for a cigar, so they thought they didn't have the clientele for it, or if they did have the clientele, that was reserved for two companies, and that's it. Like there were two companies in that category, that's who they carried, that's all they wanted, and and it took some time to, I guess, gain their trust 
uh, and their support. And, and a lot of that was really, uh, this is where Nelson Alfonso selected tobacco. He'll give me credit and say, without you, we couldn't be, you know, where we are today. And, and then I tell him, I said, all I did was I opened the doors to the, you know, I say the, the Louvre, right? I, I mm. use all this beautiful artwork, but if it's closed, nobody can see it. Nobody knows what it is. So all I did, I took that product and I just started to, to share it and I started to travel the country with it. And that was, you know, three weeks out of the month, I was, I was gone. Um, introducing people not only selected tobacco but obviously United as well and with a portfolio that big uh, I decided that it would be best especially with social media uh, to just start with our top line or our luxury uh, line that is limited in production um, aged for five years post roll um, has this great story of how he ages the cigars where they go you know for those that don't know with selected tobacco all of his products uh, they they sit in a in an aging room with five different cedars: Cuban, Spanish, Mexican, Brazilian, Lebanese. Then he'll bring humidity down, and then the humidity back up over the course of one to two years for Bandolero, three to five years for Byron, and minimum of five years for for Adabe. So that's an aging process. So there's a lot of time and a lot of um, effort that goes into making the product what it is today. So. Um, you know, it wasn't easy. And then as it started to kind of kind of grow and, and roll, I think you, you saw that was our first year with that that booth, that United United booth. Yeah. Um, whereas before, you know, we had a 20, I think a, a 10 by was a 10 by 30, I think. So but but anyway, um, so you know, we couldn't really bring people on board because one, some of the reps that were were out there didn't you know, weren't comfortable coming on taking a portfolio of that size they only wanted our high-end product and it, it just wasn't you know it wasn't a, a good fit we have a portfolio we have to present the entire portfolio to you know to retailers so um yeah kind of throwing you to the wolves was you know trying to help you understand you know the process and also the rejection i mean that's that's the hardest part of what what we do yeah. Um, and if you can get past that and start the conversation and, and reel it back, Matt, like you said, like, Hey, let's, let's have a conversation first. Yeah. Uh, let's figure out where you're, you're at. Um, you know, that's, that's the biggest challenge. And then, uh, I, I guess bringing it back to the, you know, Rel's original question. Um, yeah, we, we try to see if retailers can fit with us and we can fit with them. We don't, have a board of directors that we have to report to so mm. placing product and then never speaking to the retailer again just to come back and say hey we just placed you know product x in you know 20 accounts you know good for us it doesn't do us good it doesn't do do the retailer any good if the product's just sitting there we don't we're not looking for the one turn or, or even two turns we're looking for a relationship to build over time yeah so I always equate it to, you know, kiddingly, but also in seriousness, um, you know, if you have a significant other in your life, you have to spend time with that person as much as you want to go golfing, you want to go drinking, you want to go, you know, go out and do, you know, boy things every now and again, you have to take that person that's in your life. That that's your, um, you know, your core that's going to mm -hmm. be with you. You have to treat them with respect and you have to take them out and you have to treat them right. So, you know, we're united on the United side, our core line, that's uh, you know, that's, that's the significant other. And then yeah. if you want to go play with the boys, yeah, that's, that's the Atabay and the Byron, you know, <laughs> go ahead, you know, go play with the boys. But every now and again, you gotta, you know, just, just jump in the kiddie pool, you know, make sure the kid's not, uh, kid's not <laughs> drowning. <laughs> and, and you're kind of humble. You, I've seen you work and you bust your ass. Hmm. You hustle. Thank you, thank you, thank I, you. I love that day working with you. Um, but Thank yeah, you. you can tell him he's working. Yeah. He's busting his ass. So I can see you on the road with the same drive. Well, and yeah, but it people who, people who have seen, you know, they, they see our trade show videos and, you know, they're just little like six, seven, eight minute long interviews, but people who've never been to a PCA trade show, they don't, they don't see everything that happened because the interviews it's it's like it's like when you watch poker on tv they only show the really exciting yeah you know right. fun front right. hands but there's like there's like hours upon a 10 hours of boring everybody's folding where the the pca trade show instead of 10 hours it's boring everyone's folding it's literally like you got people waiting in line from the moment the trade show opens in the morning till it closes at night at, for all three days 
people waiting in line to talk to you about the new stuff, what they're going to reorder, what they're going to, whether or not you're going to build that relationship with a new shop, so on and so forth. It is absolutely nonstop. And, and you guys don't get a break pretty much. I mean, maybe on the last day when it starts to slow down a little bit. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's the great part because the day goes by and you, you know, to be honest, you don't even realize it. And I think, no. you know, you guys are probably the same too. You have to do the setup. You have to, you know, run around from booth to booth. You have your schedule appointments, but you have to, you, know, you have to, you have to pivot sometimes. Yep. So yeah, there was, there was no bathroom break. There was no eating. I mean, again, we're a small company, so it's myself. We, we were able to hire um, someone in-house uh, recently that, uh, that works in, in the office, Agnes uh, Nunez. She, you know, she's our account liaison, so she's there Monday through Friday. And then we have representatives on the road. So they're, they're not always in the booth with us because they're not direct. Um, so, so yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of running around, a lot of, you know, I try not to make it look like absolute uh, lunacy. Uh, but yeah, my, my mind's going a mile a minute and, you know, I'm, I'm running like crazy, but it's, uh, it, it, it all does come from, from a passion. And I never forget that I got, I got into the business by, by chance. Mm. Um, just because I, I love, I love cigars. I started smoking cigars back when I was, uh, I think 16 was you know, the first time I, I had a cigar and then it, it just grew from there. Uh, I started in the business in 97 and, um, and, and never, you know, I mean, I got out of, I shouldn't say, you know, never looked back because I got out of it for a little bit. I was in Vegas, moved out of Vegas in 2011, I think. And I had worked for the same company since, uh, you know, 98 to 2011. And then I was in hospitality, uh, for, for a couple of years, just, uh, you know, opening up a restaurant with, uh, for a friend in, in Utah and then, um, uh, moved to Boston and I was, uh, uh, director of food and beverage for the Hilton and then got into restaurants and then just, just got out in 2016 and uh, got right back into, into cigars. Cause there was, it's hard, it's hard to get out. I think once, once you're in, you just, you know, there's a piece of you that you just, that misses it. So, mm -hmm. you know, jumped right back into this, this opportunity, which, um, you know, at first for some, uh, I think probably thought it was crazy because United cigars was a complete unknown. You know, like I said, yeah. about Adabay, nobody knew it. Um, to uh, to now, where you know, there's there's a little little time to breathe, but it's you can't you can't stop. You have to constantly grind at it. But uh, but when you when you love it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's worth fighting for. You just you stay with it. Yeah. When did you uh, when did you start blending your your own cigars or, or get in that process? Um, so blending that's always that's always interesting. Right, because even when I was in Vegas, we started to you know blend. Right, there were cigar blends that we wanted to do, so we st that's where I started to kind of get into the manufacturing side. We had cigars that were on cigarette hostess trays, um, cigars that we were trying to sell nationally. Uh, the first one that that we sold nationally was actually a sweet uh, or flavored cigar, rather called Sweet Daddies. Um, so that was that was interesting. Like those that. those those sample days were the worst. I had a metal tin oh. bucket. And when they came in, it was like a puff of light, and you're like, "Yep, that's orange," and then threw it right in the right in the trash after yeah. that. But uh, but there's again, there's a market for it, so God bless them. But um, I think after that, then coming, you know, coming on board for United uh, in 2016, um, I started to look at the portfolio, and you know, there were some brands like like La Giana that that had been around for a while that just needed a, a little bit of facelift. Um, I smoked the portfolio, I I liked everything. Uh, but I just felt there were there were some cigars that needed a little bit a uh, little bit of a tweak, and um, and then I started to, you know, more travels to the Dominican, uh, started getting closer with the the manufacturers, and then I think it was 2000, 2018. I think it was two thousand eighteen or two thousand nineteen. Um, I was I was yeah two thousand eighteen. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go down to the Habanos festival um, where we were, we would, we were bringing, um, you know, some of our top, top, I hate saying top customers, but you know, someone that we, we just felt, you know, was worthy for that year because they had grown the, the portfolio in their store. So I uh, went down there and there was actually a, um, uh, a man that had, was coming out with a book. <coughs> Excuse me. He did a full seminar and, 
that's what made me say I want to learn more and do more with these blends, but be more involved as opposed to just receiving a cigar mm. and saying, yeah, I like this, but can you change it? But that was in a, a, his first name is Emilio Marrero, mm. but it's Dr. Dr. Marrero. So he's an expert. He's a world expert on uh, tobacco genetics for Cuba. Mm. So he was just, you know, and they translate it for you. So I'm listening to this whole thing and, and that, that kind of, you know, push me in a different direction where I was like, you know, I love what United's doing and I like changing you know, the cigars, but I want, like, I, I want to get my hands dirty. Yes. I want to go to the farm. We all have pictures in front of, you know, the plants and it's beautiful, but I want to be part of the process. I want to yeah. open up bales and I want to smell, um, you know, the, whatever the, you know, Habano 2000 Criollo. I would just get, I want to get involved. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to try the different tobaccos and then start to, put them together and learn how to, how to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, you know, that, that seminar first and, and, and meeting him, um, you know, at the, at the show was, was something that was, that was special, uh, to me and just kind of set, set things in that direction. Nice. Bring up Thomas's question. Yeah. So viewer question, Thomas says 23 years of smoking cigars and only having maybe two acids. So I'm, I'm thinking he means he's only, out of all the cigars he smoked, he's only had a couple infused cigars. What would you recommend for my first United medium to full? Although I do like a good Connecticut. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think our, our portfolio in general is, is pretty, safe where where when i started to blend like the lagiana 30th or the red anchor the red anchor to me is very very complex where it's a nice medium um body but you're going to have um some nice spice um you know the retro if you're if you're starting to get into more and more cigars learning how to retro hail uh, and don't be afraid where you think you have to you know take in smoke and then blow the entire thing out, you know through your nose to get get the right. experience but um you know, think of it as when you're sick and your, you know, your nose is stuffed and, and you're like, I can't taste anything. So the nose just plays a big part of tasting, right? So, you know, don't be afraid to, to retro hill. Um, but in, in the United portfolio, I'd say, yeah, try, try a red anchor. Uh, La Giana is, um, is very, very safe. And even the, you know, the natural is going to be uh, a lighter medium and the Maduro will be, you know, a little bit stronger, uh, stronger medium. That's a, that's a good, good safe spot. And, um, the new United, uh, Connecticut, uh, we use, you know, so in the blending process, I found, um, this Dominican broadleaf that I had never, I had never tried. I'd never seen and came across and, and smoked it on its own. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is fantastic. Like it's, you know, it's a powerhouse. And, but, you know, I didn't want to, you know, completely when I was reblending United, I didn't want to completely change it, but I wanted something that was balanced. So we used, um, you know, the Dominican broadleaf, but then there were some other uh, Dominican tobaccos from uh, Quisqueya uh, that we started to use that were kind of sweeter. So I was just cutting my, cutting my cigar. And um, so, you know, blending that, that, that kind of changed everything. So even the United is, is safe and that new United Connecticut uh, and Matt, you know, tell me, where where you lie on it because this is your first time smoking it but i put that united connecticut as a softer medium it's very delicate on the palate but um you, you're going to have some some nice body you know chewiness to it yeah you will. so i get i get a lot of throughout i've gotten a lot of creaminess a lot of smoothness and there's i get little hints of spice kind of on the back of my palate but the retrohale is really buttery Actually, there's no harshness or there's no bite on the retro hail. So this, and I'm usually, like you said, Oliver, I usually, when I retro hail, you know, maybe every third puff, I'll let just a little bit of the smoke out of my nose, but not all of it. But this is one of those cigars that is smooth enough that you can literally let the whole puff out of your nose without it making your eyes water. Uh, so it's really, there's a lot of smoothness uh, in the cigar. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, that um, so even that Ecuadorian wrapper, when you look at lighter wrappers, you know, a lot of people will, again, say that, oh, that's going to be mild. That's going to be, you know, there's not going to be any taste. And uh, then they'll look at a darker wrapper and say, oh, that's going to be too strong. But, you know, everything plays a part. Yeah. Um, so with this one, you know, I, I, I used a couple different um, wrappers on it and 
And this particular one just, just kind of made it silky, made it buttery. So, you know, buttery is that saltiness, that, uh, you know, sweet. And um, I thought it just complemented the, the cigar. So it's, it's approachable for someone that's just starting out looking for something that's a little easier uh, on the palate, but it's also um, a cigar that's relatable to an experienced smoker. Yeah. So we have a we have a large population of cigar smokers that are nerds and really like that punch you in the mouth, heavy, burn your nostrils when you yeah. inhale. What's what's yeah. in yeah. your portfolio that hits that? That's that's that that's firecracker all day. Yeah. Light up light up the skies. That yeah. um like that one that, right here? Yeah, that firecracker Maduro. Oh, you want that one? Yeah, yeah. the other camera. Use my camera. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was the, even that, that was a whole, you know, redesign of the packaging. Um, you know, I was just a big fan of that Americana, hmm. uh, you know, tattoo art and, um, you know, wanted to, wanted to keep it kind of, you know, within that United theme, like even on the regular Habano for the firecracker, there's, you know, there's the Eagle, there's, you know, some red, white, and blue mm -hmm. stars and everything mm -hmm. going on. But then underneath you, there's a, there's a red anchor. And uh, because we knew even back then when I was doing the repackaging for Firecracker, that Red Anchor was going to come out and be in our portfolio. But I don't I don't even remember when we did the repackage for Firecracker, but it was a few years before uh, Red Anchor even came out. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Firecracker, we got Miguel O in the comments here. What is your um, next Firecracker collection? Ooh, if excellent. You, uh, have something mm, you can share nice with Nice lead, us? huh? Migs. Great lead. Um so, well, the next collaboration is the Lunatic Firecracker with Aganorsa. That's coming out in June. Nice. Very nice. Outside of that, yeah, that's that's still hush. But we do have <laughs> uh yeah, we have we have next year's next year's already already lined up, already working on uh, on the packaging and and anytime we do these collaborations too, um you know, this uh, those collaborations I give, you know, we give 100% uh, well, maybe 95, uh, 95 percent credit to the manufacturer because that that collaboration we want it to be a good representation of that company's blend. Mm. Now, because it's it's a different vitola that is usually isn't in their portfolio. Um, you know, we have to tweak it a little bit, and because it's a firecracker, we want to make it a little more, um, I guess, aggressive. You know, a little mm. bit more firecracker. Uh, you know, ask, but uh, yeah, that, that lunatic uh, and working, uh, I worked with Terrence Riley on that one and he's so easy to work with. Um, you know, he's efficient. He's, uh, he's organized. So it was, you know, going back and forth and, um, you know, sent samples of, of what, you know, what direction we were going in and it, uh, and it, and it works. So that'll be the next, the next collaboration. So when you go out looking for, companies to collaborate in the firecracker project do you cast a pretty wide net or or do you tend to just you know go to you know a few per year or how how does that process look for you um do, do you mean do we go for a few per year like collaborations like, that are coming out or or do we do we approach do we work on on a pro on multiple firecrackers per year for future yeah, I mean, I guess just kind of overall from a brand standpoint, you know, of all the cigar brands that are out there, you know, do you do you pretty much try to get a, get in touch with as many cigar companies as possible to see if it's a project they would be interested in for the future? Or do you have uh, certain companies that you that you want to work with? Right. Yeah, there there yeah, I'd say more more along the lines of there are certain companies not necessarily that we want to work with, but we think it would work with right that it would make yeah. it would make sense um yeah the lunatic was just kind of you know when we when we thought about it and 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 i pitched it to, to terrence it was um you know not obviously not something that they're they're known for right so i thought it could be could be interesting but then it's almost like a little sampler of of what they they offer yeah. um so yeah it's it's targeted i'd okay. say um, and it has to, you know, it has to, it has to work for, you know, for, for both sides. Um, it's, it's definitely more of a marketing, uh, tool than tool than anything. Um, you know, because it's not, it's not the easiest size to make, especially when it's not in their, um, you know, their, their typical portfolio, but yeah, we try to be a little more targeted. 
Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Is there somebody that you reached out to work with a firecracker and they didn't want to work with you yet? Or is who's your unicorn that you want to work with to put a firecracker? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's such a dangerous question because there's, <laughs> there, there are things that, that we're working on. Um, so I can't, yeah, uh, there, there's there some, there's some unicorns out there that I, I think, uh, would be great. Yeah. You know, look, uh, also, so one that we did come out with was the, the Bandolero firecracker, mm -hmm. um, for us that, that we didn't know if, if Nelson would, would be open to it. Um, because Bandolero already is a cigar that's aged post roll, you know, the one to two years, um, it's a little elevated in price. So would it work for that, you know, that format? So, um, you know, in the in the end, that turned out to be one of my favorite firecrackers. Yeah, yeah, it's delicious. Well, I, if it's all right with you, Oliver, I want to sort of move into a very important topic of discussion, and that is tacos. <laughs> yes, sir. So, I I know you travel a lot, and. You know, it's it's always great when you travel to find sort of these hidden gems, whether it's a cigar shop or a restaurant or a bar or a taco truck, whatever it might be. What do you have like certain sources or or just what's your trick to finding when you travel to finding the hidden gem taco spots? Um, my my trick is probably just um gluttony <laughs> because <laughs> like you'll go especially because in massachusetts like, i think it's probably the same in um you know minnesota there's there's not like a taco truck everywhere but then i go to certain states and there's a taco truck everywhere yeah so i'll stop and i'm like oh i want to try this spot out and i'm like that's a really good taco but now i've learned that i can't you know just commit to one one truck because, like, especially when I'm going to like California, the Arizonas, uh, Texas, I know that there's going to be another taco truck somewhere close. So I end up stopping and, and then giving it a try. So I'll get like one or two tacos. Um, in Connecticut, there's actually a stretch right by I think it's I think it's Bridgeport, but it's called um, uh, Food Truck Paradise. So there are about 15 or 20 trucks that are just all lined up. And, um, and one day I, I said, uh, yeah, I was actually there with, with my kids and my brother and his kids. And I, and I took them to a couple. I said, okay, we have to order this. We have to order this. And I said, who wants to stay? I'm going to, I'm going to hit all these trucks and just one or two tacos, right? And just, just hit them and, and see how many we can get through. And then, uh, and then I'll know the next time I come, which ones to, which ones to hit. But yeah, mm -hmm. I guess the, the, the secret is gluttony. I love it. So to, to caveat off that, in all your taco travels, because that's what you do, right? You travel and look for tacos all the time. You don't, <laughs> oh, you don't well, have hold on. I, look, there are people that that um, that sign my paycheck, so I have to say that when I travel, I'm working. Okay. But um, but I do have to eat. Um, yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I think my. Uh, so sorry. What was it? The question <laughs> is, the on question all is. your taco <laughs> driving experiences. Yeah. Where have you found that Oliver Navad loves the best tacos? The, at? the best, the California. Best. And what 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 spot? Yeah, so there there's actually this one, um, and it's not even it's not even a shop. It's called Avenue Twenty Six in right outside of L.A. and it's in like a back industrial alley. Yeah, but it is jam packed, and they have they have everything. They have the you know, they got the Alpa store, you know, rotating on. They have I don't know how many you know, grills, flat top grills lined up, you know, one's just all onions and, and jalapenos and they're just, you know, grilling those up, but it's, um, they have some of the best tacos and they have everything, every part of the animal you can think of the best. Mm. Um, if you're look, when we go to Vegas, um, everyone always talks about El, uh, El Gordito. Tacos, tacos El, Gordo. El Gordos. El Gordos. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not top of my list, but you go right next door to there's um, tacos up a store. <clears throat> there's never a line, and they're they're very good. And okay. then even right next door to that, there's uh, Tijuana Birria. I think they they only have birria, 
Yeah. And that's that's a pretty good spot. So, you know, if, if you're just on the strip. Yeah. So instead of waiting in line and going to that spot, that's the, the, I mean, they're very good. I, I, I would I would venture to say that that's probably not you know, probably the highest generating spot for them, but probably not okay. their their best. So when you're trying tacos out, what do you order? You a beef, chicken, pork, lengua? Uh, um, I'll do if lengua if, if um, you know if, if one if I trust the spot, uh, but I'll try some lengua. I'll try some tripas, uh, uh, buche, um, yeah, every almost everything. Uh, mm. What's the the skin the uh, cuerdo? Cuerdo. Yeah, yeah. So and that when it's right. Like it's it's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, El El Gato, which is just outside of um, Stogies in Houston. That place is it's just a little taco truck. Fantastic mm-hmm. spot. They have this thing called the machete, which is basically just a, a it's shaped like a machete blade, but it's like a um, it's like a big. I don't even want to call it a quesadilla, but it's like a, a big quesadilla. It's phenomenal. Huh. It's too much though, but it's good. Yeah. Is there any, have you had any places that have, I guess, non-traditional taco fillings that just kind of blew you away? Um, or do you tend yeah, to I mean, lean I think, more towards traditional? No, 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 no. I, I, no, I, I, I stay away, usually stay away from like the, the chicken or just a carne asada. Uh, definitely, like I, I, I'll judge a place for by their their carnitas, yeah. Um, because I think that you know that that can be done right or I mean they all can be done right or wrong, right? But um, you know when they have good carnitas, I think they have uh, you know everything else will be good. If on their menu they do have lengua and they have cuerdo and they have um, you know they have the head, the cheek, they have all parts of the animal there, yeah. then I know that it's it's pretty legit. Hmm. yeah there's there's places that really only have sort of americanized yeah. tacos you know ground meat, good yeah. chicken breast or ground beef or you know and it, it's when you find the places that use that aren't afraid to use organ meats or tongue or or, or real barbacoa that has like the cheek and the head of the cow, like in Brownsville, yeah. Texas. That is the most like it's on the side of the road and a little stand, and you pick that up every Sunday. Oh my god, that's the best barbacoa I've ever had. Yeah, there's a, there's a good spot right in in Texas in um, in Plano. I think it's called Los Angeles. Um, they have really good tacos too. They just moved locations because they were they were growing. So kind of being a part of their um, their growth. I don't want to say be a part of it, but. <laughs> You know, seeing where they were before and then seeing yeah. their new spot, it's like, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So, um, you know, finding these spots are good. I, I, I don't. Uh, the ones that kind of venture into the, um, I don't even know what you would call it, kind of a you know the Americanized version of tacos. Um, you know, I, I stay away from those. Okay. I, I, I I'm just, I, I just love a street taco. I think because of the simplicity. Of a taco, um, that's why I love it. Plus, look, I got in—I loved street tacos to begin with, anyway. But when I started to travel on the United budget, um, you know, because I'm very conscious of what I spend for for the company, yeah. so tacos just kind of became the thing. And I was like, look, who doesn't love a good street taco? And I'm just gonna start posting it and start talking about it. And um, you know, I've I've said it before, but I think street tacos are. Are, are very uh, very close in relationship to to a cigar, right? The wrapper is the tortilla. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, filler filler is the the protein that you take, and then the binder what holds it all together is the salsa and you know onion cilantro. Yeah. So I've never looked at it this way. You just like made me think <laughs> of a whole different level of tacos now. <laughs> and it's amazing because a cigar like. You know, the four of us, we grab tobacco, we grab the same tobacco, and we try to blend a cigar. It's going to be four different cigars. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's the same with, with a taco, right? Um, somebody can do a carne asada, and I've had some terrible carne asada that I don't even I don't even understand how there's a line or how they're still in business or or what. It's just dry. It's tough. It's mm-hmm. you know, no flavor. Um, but they've taken a piece of meat. They tried to season it and then they tried to put it together and it, you know, the, the, the tortilla falls apart and it's just all bad. So 
Well, this very, place, very similar to cigars. This place we went to in Vegas, next to that, next to the cigar shop <laughs> that's called Smoke. S S M O K. I, I wouldn't even it. call that. Yeah. Yeah. It was. <laughs> it was terrible. It, it was. It was the driest. Yeah. most unseasoned chicken breast I've ever had in my life. It was horrifyingly <laughs> bad. The funniest bad. thing was they warned was, us. They warned us. Well, no, they, they warned us, but we go to the cashier and we're like, hey, we want your spiciest. What has the most flavor? Oh, the chicken. So, yeah. We all chicken. got chicken. And, 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 it was, and that's, yeah. It, ta- sure. it tasted like, like wallpaper paste mixed with sand. It was awful. You would have loved it. And, I mean, they did give us a forewarning. They did call the place Regretto's. So I think it was Roberto's, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you went to Roberto. Yeah. It was terrible. Oh, that's that. Yeah, Vegas, that's just a big chain. So mm-hmm. Roberto's, I would say the only, and I haven't been there in a while, but when I lived there, uh, the, <laughs> like a breakfast burrito, yeah. that, cured, that cured a lot of. Okay. <laughs> lot of problems yeah. uh, they have a chorizo like just a, a good chorizo burrito so their, their burritos are, are are decent uh they're not great but a, you know a breakfast burrito it's i mean it's eggs and easy i would do i would do that um yeah. but no it, it, like if you're in vegas uh tacos uh mexico is right on sahara but you have to go up you know a little ways um you know they're they're pretty good uh, tacos y taco is, is a little weird. That place, that place is very, I went there, uh, three, three or four years ago with, uh, Andrew Tolzman and Garrett. We went, we went there and it was really hmm. good. Taco y taco. Yeah. 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 That, that was, and now that, that's more, I would say that's more Americanized than anything. It's more, it's not totally a restaurant yet. Right. But it's, it's close to it. So that's, that's right on the border where I, I say, okay, y'all try it. And, yeah, maybe I won't, but that, but the, that was actually pretty good. Their Al Pastor was because uh, that for me it's Al Pastor. Like if they get Al Pastor right, then I know they're probably a good place. Yeah, and they they got it right. It was spicy. The pineapple was actually like fresh pineapple yeah. that was grilled and charred a little bit, and and so it 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 was it was good. So. Yeah, I like uh, Thomas Darling's idea here. Uh, next time you're on, Oliver, I uh, also think we should have a taco, taco pairing, pairing show. show. We'll oh. prepare for this. Have some tacos, maybe. I would love that. So that's uh, going going back to you know how do you how do you once you open an account, what do you do? So we had uh, I've I've done several events where we during COVID is when it started, but Blackstone Griddle Top started to to come out. Oh and, yeah. Um, and and um, I have one and cooking on it i was like this is phenomenal and we started to use it as a package because we couldn't do events you couldn't go to shop so we said okay we're going to send you this griddle top um you know however many boxes are united and then that's that's the giveaway and then once we could start doing events in person again um i would go so for like actually our our atabe lounge uh industrial cigars in frisco texas uh, which was the ideal place because they had supermarkets, little supermarkados, you know, around the corner where everything's already marinated. So I picked up, I don't know, whatever it was, five pounds of chicken, five pounds of um, of pork, five pounds of, of beef, a bunch of onions, jalapenos, a bunch of tortillas. And then I cooked. So, again, instead of giving away product <coughs> with purchase of something that they sell, I said, okay, well, when you buy, you know, whatever it was, buy three cigars, you get um, – you know, you know, two tacos. When you buy, mm. um, you know, seven cigars, you got you know five tacos. When you buy a box, you got unlimited tacos, and then you got a raffle ticket every time you purchase cigars. And that raffle ticket went towards uh, winning the griddle top, went towards winning all the accessories. Went, uh, I bought a you know a nice uh, cutting board with a cleaver, um, so we gave that away, and uh, and it turned into a you know a fun event. Everyone was eating, yeah. smoking, drinking together. And, and those, those have been like the, the best, best events. Um, I think, cause it's, it is more personal, right? Sitting yeah. down at a, at a table and, and breaking bread with people is, is more personal. So that's fun. I mean, I like that. It mixes it up. It's not just a, you know, here's, thanks for buying some cigars. Here's a hat, you know, it's, <laughs> right. I, I love, I, it mixes it up. Not that there's anything wrong with hats, but it mixes mm-hmm. it up a little bit. Yeah. I, yeah. Something, something different. Bread. Oh, I love yeah. breaking bread with people anyway. Oh yeah. It's just I wish we had somewhere we could eat, smoke, and drink in Minnesota. Minnesota, but... that's not allowed. Yeah. Unfortunately. But we, we can have we can have taco trucks come out to events. Ooh, yeah. Good idea. 
I, yeah, yeah. we did. Uh, I did that with Nickel City up in Buffalo. Tommy, oh, nice. Tommy Farrell. Yeah, he. Um, we did an event with him, and he had a taco truck out front, and you know, x amount of you know whatever. Again, make a purchase, and you got you got tacos from the the taco truck. When are you coming out to Minnesota? Uh, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get. I'm let's, gonna, hey, he's let's a get something on the book. I a flexible schedule. You tell me when you're coming <laughs> in. I'll make sure I'm available. He's a firefighter, so the answer is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's get something on the books. Love yeah, that. there's some there's some good taco spots uh, around the Twin Cities area, so we can yeah. definitely uh, and so and of course some great cigar shops. But who yeah. cares about them? We just want to go to the, hit the taco Tacos. spots. Uh, much much like the East Coast, I gotta wait for you guys to thaw and and then I'll be out. Oh, it's been a beautiful winter here. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it honestly has been. Yeah. Way under the radar for uh, snow. Yeah. Yeah, it's been beautiful. So we we just got a snowstorm. Yeah, I know you guys got hammered. Yeah. So I got a question for uh, you guys in the studio here. What's that, Matt? Is it time? Time for what? I think it's time for this week's Numero de los Muertos. And as always, Numero de los Muertos is brought to us by our friends at Smoke In. I'm Steve here with the joke to tell you about Smoke In's Cigar of the Month Club. Every month, I personally handpick five premium cigars. Another great feature is our Double Down Club. With a simple check mark, you can get double this great selections every month and save $10. Every month, there's a special discount code where if you like any of the selections, you can get them at a special discounted rate for our Cigar of the Month Club members. We've made it super simple. All you gotta do is log into your account. There's a little green button there. If it's green, you're active. You want to take a break going out of town? Simply hit the button and you'll deactivate your membership. We get the stuff out on the 28th of every month. Our membership bills on the 28th and we get every member's package out on the 28th if it's a shipping day. All delivered to your door for $34.95. Five great reasons on what makes Smoking Cigar of the Month Club the best club out there. Check it out. Peace. All right, Numero de los Muertos, episode 240. And again, I'm continuing the trend this week. The number is... This year? One. This year, you mean? This year, yeah. What year is it again? I don't know. 1924? Oh, okay, I thought it was still in Somewhere in the 20s. 20-something? 20, 20, 20, 20 something? 20 something? Yeah. yeah. The number is one. Oliver, you remember this game. So I do, you, I do. You, along with... Uh, our studio audience and uh, our viewers get to play 20 questions and figure out what caused this person to die in such a strange way. Fact or fiction? Fact. Right. Continent. And, it, and it's just one one person. Uno. 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 Yeah. He's, he's good at picking these one person ones. This yeah. happened in North America. North, North America. America. Is it a North workplace America. accident? Uh, it was not a workplace accident. What time? What time frame? Twenties, thirties, last week? Uh, w within the last seven years. Hmm. Was it something ingested? Uh, possibly. Were animals involved? Animals were not involved. Was alcohol involved? Alcohol was not involved. Was it Roberto's Tacos that made them die? <laughs> it's not Roberto's Tacos. <laughs> We're still here. Um, well, all right. Something something that possibly... So possibly ingested, did it... Was it something that went into a different orifice of the body? No. Okay. It was eaten. It was eaten. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Was it some kind of taco? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it Ooh. was. No, was it like a ghost, uh, some pepper? No, so this was actually a food eating competition. A food eating competition. So, so dude ate 40 tacos and killed over? August 14th, 2019. A uh, man died shortly after competing in a taco eating contest at a minor <laughs> league baseball game in California. Dana Whoa. Hutchings, 41, of Fresno, died Tuesday night shortly after arriving at the hospital. An autopsy uh, will be done, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
Tuesday night's competition came ahead of Saturday's World Taco Eating Championship. Uh, Matthew Boylan, who watched Tuesday's taco eating uh, contest from his seat in Section 105, told the Fresno Bee he quickly noticed Hutchings because he was eating so much faster compared to the other two contestants. Hutchings collapsed and hit his face on a table about seven minutes into the contest, uh, was rushed to the hospital. The contest ended immediately, and uh, Hutchings was pronounced dead <coughs> later that evening. So was it wow. from the taco he passed out and smacked his head and killed him there? Well, that that's the thing. They're not sure if it was the actual ingestion of the tacos that killed him or if there was some other condition that just happened to, you know. But during... So the year before that, in the twenty eight the the twenty eighteen version of the exact same championship in Fresno, professional eater Jeffrey Esper downed seventy three tacos in eight minutes. Wow. That's nothing Oliver could beat that. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow, that's Ooh. madness. Yeah, so uh, seventy three tacos. So what's the math on that? How many is that per seventy three into eight? Or so, no, or roughly eight, ten, nine, eight, nine to ten, right? Jesus. Nine. Yeah, nine. Oof. Oof, God. My stomach upset just thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I, I can't. <laughs> no, because you want to. You want to enjoy it. I, I couldn't ever do. Even if I was good at it, I don't think I would do eating competitions no. because no. I just I want to enjoy my food. Yeah, that's like that dumbass idea of smoking <clears throat> a really strong cigar. See how fast you could smoke it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's dumb. It Why is. Would you want to do that? Yeah, so it's, not gonna, it's not going to end well. So eat your tacos in moderation, uh, <laughs> and make sure they're made with quality ingredients. And one other question, Oliver, what do you think about fish tacos? Uh, I think I think they have a place, right? It's it's not. I, I don't know if it's a if it's a, a taco truck spot, but a good Baja taco, yeah, with the right batter, the right, you know. Uh, they put cabbage, shredded yes. cabbage on there. It's uh, it, it can be pretty good. Mm -hmm. The um, not my go-to, but I've mentioned this before. But the the pier at Laguna Beach, mm. they have a seafood market there, and I was there one time. We got fresh. Uh, I mean, we literally pointed at the tank and picked out fresh crabs that we wanted to have steamed, and then while we were waiting for those to get cooked, we went and got pitchers of beer. And fish tacos from this place on the corner. Yeah. Sat in the sun right on the ocean. And uh, I mean, I'm sure, yeah, some of it had to do with the setting. But those fish tacos, and, and it was like legit. It was just caught fish, lightly battered, shredded cabbage, you know, lime crema and cilantro and onions. Yeah. It was outstanding. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's like a cigar, too. Because yes. sometimes it's not the cigar; it's the it's the the experience, the environment, the the social setting, and yeah. then you go back to the cigar. You know, mm -hmm. you know, a month later, it's somewhere else, and you're like, "Wait a second, this isn't the same." <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. No, and you mentioned Laguna Beach; it's 100 percent right because it's it's where it is. So yeah, there's yeah. A, there's a place for it for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so it's time for the reveal on uh, this week's Spirit of Mystery from Postani Cigars. Uh, it's it's a decent bourbon. I'm not going to say it's one of my favorites, but you know it's it's easy to drink because it's only 90 proof, um, and it's got you know it's it's a little bit on the milder side. It's not you know it's not super flavorful. The finish is kind of short, but it's a good bourbon that I would probably um, I, I don't know if I'd necessarily put it in my rotation, but you know it's good. It is 1835 bourbon whiskey from Texas. Let me see that. You've had it. Oh, I have before. had that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. And another Texas, bottle that not... says, come and take it. <laughs> Texas made. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, I don't know if it's a, either a little more age or just a little more attention to the mash bill, but it's pretty decent bourbon. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, so that's this week's spirit of mystery from Post Downey Cigars. Uh, let's jump into the lightning round brought to us by J.C. Newman Cigar Company, America's oldest family owned premium cigar maker, creators of the popular Brick House, Perla Del Mar, Diamond Crown and the American. 
J.C. Newman Cigar. Oh my gosh, J.C. Newman Cigar Company <laughs> operates out of their 113-year-old El Rillo Cigar Factory in historic Cigar City, Tampa, Florida. For more information on their cigars or visitor experience, please visit jcnewman.com. Definitely just tripped over my teeth on that last read. That was fun. Um, all right, Oliver, you've been on the show a couple times, you, so you've had some of our some of our oldie but goodie uh, lightning round questions. But we got some we got some fresh ones for you. Um, so, if you were suddenly a billionaire. What would be the first unnecessary thing you would spend some money on? That's a B. Billion. 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 Um, that's a that's a that's a great question. I like to spend on myself, but I don't think I I don't think I do it enough. Um so maybe something just as, as simple as getting uh you know, season tickets for the uh, for the Red Sox because oh, that man. is not an affordable thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially especially alone. for that. I mean, there are some some bigger market teams that that season tickets are, especially if you want good seats. Right, like season tickets behind home plate. I yeah. don't even want to think about it. Uh, um, what those what that eighty one games is going to cost you? Oh, my kid wanted to see Bryce Harper. Uh, this was two years ago. Third base side, we were like five rows up. By the time the day was said and done between parking, for, for us, like for the Red Sox, um, you know, parking around the stadium, I think I paid 50, 60 bucks. Um, you know, he's he's eating like a horse. <laughs> and, you know, tickets and, and everything. Yeah, we were out of there for, for 500 bucks for, Easy. for a night. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's not, it's not it's not something you can just take your kids to the, to the, to the ballgame anymore nope. for good seats. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so yeah. Oliver, if the Yankees and Boston wind up playing in the playoffs this year, you have to make a little bet. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, <laughs> your team, your team is stacked, but yeah, but yeah, by that, well, point, that point there will be injuries. Yeah, and we went twenty-two years now without championships, so it's really weird for us. Oh, shut up! Really weird. God, speaking that's, speaking of twenty-two not, years. Oh, can okay. I can I jump in and do a little pitch here? Absolutely. I'm smoking, I'm smoking the our new Gold Star. We also released this at the show, but oh, this yeah. one this one is is pretty um, is pretty special because for Gold Star it's it's a brand that um, you know was in um, not the United portfolio because it kind of went dormant for a little bit, but it, you know released in the in the 90s, and it was something that during FDA um, you know kind of saw the list. And wanted to make sure we kept Gold Star because, you know, growing up as a kid, there was, you know, you get a Gold Star on your fridge. Um, you know, Gold Stars are, you see stars on homes. You just see stars everywhere. It, it fits the United theme. But Gold Star, uh, when I was going through the repackaging and, and the reblending with, I worked with uh, Weber Ventura on the, on the project. Um, it just so happened that, there's uh, a gentleman in New Hampshire that owns a gun range um, that has some Navy SEALs go mm. to his uh, his range. And he had come in. He wanted to do something, like, you know, just a little private label, do something special because he he's on the board of Swim With a Mission, which is um, a foundation that raises money for, um, you know, the, the veterans and the, and, and the SEALs and we partnered up and did this gold star project so this gold star limited release has a as a special band with the you know the flag in the background um it is a you know gold star and then it has the navy seal tridents on it mm. and we put this together we did 210 numbered boxes uh we sold out at the show but um but it will be landing uh this month we're donating united cigars is donating 25 the first 25 boxes back to the uh, Navy SEAL uh, Museum and uh, Swim With a Mission so that they can put these up at auction and raise money for the Navy SEAL Gold Star families. So we hope that um, these boxes that, uh, that we give back should raise a minimum of $10,000 for the, for the families. But the, the plan is to have the Navy SEALs sign some of those boxes so that au at auction 
uh, they'll go for even more. So it's just a it's it's a feel good project because um, you know not only this branch of you know our, our military, you know very special forces, um, you know they you know they did the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, so if we can do a little bit to give back to the families, um, you know that's that's what we're we're going to try to do. Uh, so these boxes will be landing soon. Uh, they'll be on shelves. So. Uh, you know, these, these cigars, these gold star limited editions, you know, when you're smoking them, you're smoking them for not only it's a great, great blend, but, uh, it's, it's for a good, good cause as well. That's outstanding. That's I love awesome. It. Yep. Thanks for doing that. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you want to hit him with the fast food question? All right, Oliver, here we go. What is the most overrated fast food and underrated fast food out there in your travels? Oh, uh, this just came up, and I'm going to get so much shit for this. Um, but I, I went back to Whataburger. I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, what I love about Texas is that they're so passionate about everything that they they have and create. Like Topo Chico, I'll get shit for this too. Topo Chico is a good sparkling water, and I'm drinking sparkling water. Like I have the soda stream here, so I can do sparkling water. Yeah. Um, but they're fanatics about it. But Whataburger, the first one I had uh, was, you know, way salty. And this was a couple of years ago. But then, you know, it, it came back up and I see it posted and people are talking about it. And so I went back to it. And it just wasn't it just wasn't there for me. I don't I don't get it. So overrated, I'd say I'd say Whataburger. And what's the most underrated fast food out there? Most underrated. Um Most underrated fast food. It's hard because I don't I don't do a lot of fast food. Um, but hmm. let's say Bojangles. Ooh, yeah. Some, I like some Bojangles. Get, some, get some get some chicken in you. Yeah. Yeah, Bojangles is a good East Coast spot for sure. I used to hit that in Raleigh, North Carolina when I lived out there. I've never had I've never had Whataburger or Bojangles. Ooh. Bojangles. You guys got to get out more. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what what blend is this? I'll show them that picture. What oh, blend this. is this firecracker? Oh, that's the new. That's the new Connecticut. Mm. So, and, so again, looking at our, our our portfolio, it's like, okay, well, how many how many new things can can we come up with, and how many new things can the industry come up with? Uh, so we just wanted to expand the expand the line, uh, expand the footprint for for firecracker. Um, so we did the, you know, the Maduro, which came out as the black bomb a couple years ago. And then the, the firecracker Connecticut came out this year. It's funny how people, you know, sometimes you associate, oh, it's a Connecticut shade wrapper. So it's going to taste the same. Mm -hmm. Well, I just finished a United Connecticut and I'm just firing up this firecracker Connecticut, completely different cigar. Yeah. The aroma is different right Thank off you. the bat. The flavor is different right off the bat. You can tell that this one is, at, at, and I may be speaking out of turn and completely off my nut, but you can, it, it's right away. I was like, oh, this is a firecracker. This may be a Connecticut wrapper, but this is a firecracker. <laughs> That's, thank you. That's, <clears throat> again, hum, just humbling hearing that to see, because that, those come from the same factory, the Mahio Cubana factory in, in Garabo, uh, just in, in, uh, in Santiago. And, but, working with different tobaccos right? yeah. i want them i want them to be different and the firecracker has to have its own identity and united has to have its own identity so um yeah that, that means a lot i'm glad you're enjoying it and that's part of the core line now for firecracker those part of, yeah that's nice. part of the core line very nice all right i and think that, we'll i think he's had the zombie one already yeah i think we'll jump into notable smokables for this week. Uh, Notable Smokables brought to us by Don Doroteo Cigars, a brand with both purpose and passion dedicated to creating change from within. By developing their own land, they are able to own the entire process throughout the life cycle of the plant. Uh, they methodically carry out each step, ensuring that the final product is of the finest quality. The new Salt of the Earth lines, Piedra Viva and Piedra Angular, are available now at Don Doroteo Retail Partners. Please visit dondoroteo.com to learn more. Uh, so, Oliver, you've been through this with us before. Each week, we name a cigar that we smoked recently that was notable to us. Now, this could be a cigar that's been on the market for decades. 
that we revisited for the first time in a very long time or a cigar that's brand new to the market that we've tried for the first time ever. Uh, obviously, you're smoking mostly your own stuff, but uh, if you've had a chance recently to smoke something from somebody else, is there anything that stood out to you? Um, well, there's one that I smoked and one that I didn't smoke, if that makes sense. So I'll yeah. tell you, I'll tell you the one that I didn't smoke first. Uh, so the the new Patina Nicaragua, that yeah. cheap ass that cheap ass Mo walked right by me. He's like, I got to get you a cigar. Then never never came back. Uh, no, Mo's, Mo's a good friend from Patina, but yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to to try that that one yet. But I'm excited to uh, because I do I do like what he's doing. And then, uh, but I was with uh, I was with Casey Hogan, so let's bring it back to you know Minnesota. Yeah, and I was smoking the the Crux Habano. Yeah, it's a nice cigar. It's a very solid cigar. I'm 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 still partial to the Du Connoisseur. Mm. You know, I I put that at the top of the list, but uh, not anymore. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Justin, what's the notable for you this week? Um, I finally tried the uh, Dale Nicaragua from Luciano Cigars, and oh yeah, uh, I believe that was with Dale Zagaran from uh, Germany, right? Yeah, that was a yep. good one. Yep. Uh, Raul, what's notable for you this week? Well, the Roma Craft pre-release of the Pennsylvania. Oh, the Pennsylvania Cro Magnum. <laughs> it's fire. Is it good? It's fire. Is it good? I'm excited to try that cigar. Mm -hmm. um, my notable this week uh, was one that I've kind of enjoyed off and on for a few years since it came out. Uh, the Oscar Valladera Superfly Connecticut. Um, nice Connecticut shade cigar. I've been on a just massive Connecticut shade kick for the last, honestly, since PCA. Because mm -hmm. you smoke so much of PCA, my palate was absolutely exhausted. I've been smoking a ton of Connecticut shade cigars for the last couple weeks since getting back from Vegas. Um, so let's, uh, give everybody an idea of some cool stuff coming up on the next few weeks on how about that cigar live and coming attractions brought to us by Hoagland insurance at Hoagland insurance. They are excited to serve and educate any new customers and give existing customers a refresher, whether it's a new business policy, auto insurance, home policy, or life insurance. If you're currently insured or just looking for a quote, Tony Hoagland and his team would love to create a personal price plan just for you. Mention how about that cigar when you make your first appointment and Tony will have a free cigar just for you. For more information, please call 763-421-4900 or visit champlininsurance.com. All right, next Monday night on April 15th, we have Eric from Oak Glen Tobacconist, part of our Hidden Gem series. Yes, sir. And then the following week, another installment in our Hidden Gem series. We have Ronnie Haisha from Secreto Cigar Bar in Detroit, in the Detroit area, uh, not necessarily Detroit proper. Uh, and then just a little programming note on April 29th, we will not have a show because I will be in Denver. Ooh. What, hang, you, what hang, you doing in Denver? Just going on a quick little getaway with my wife. Fun. So Good for you. Yeah. Just getting getting out of town and and uh you know, seeing seeing de what Denver has to offer. See a man, tacos. a man that understands the United portfolio. Every now and again, <laughs> gotta, gotta go take the wife. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you, so, man. Oliver, brother, if you would please give our viewers and listeners an idea, where is the best place for them to keep up with everything that you and United Cigars has going on? If uh, if you're on social media, be sure to check us out at United Cigars on uh, on Instagram, X, and United Cigar Group on Facebook. Um, yeah, anything. Just uh, you know, keep living united out there. Support us uh, the best you can. Small small boutique company. I'm grinding out there. I'm my life is tacos, so I'd like to upgrade it to you know my plate <laughs> instead of three tacos. Maybe get that little little dessert at the end. And with your support out there, maybe I can do it. All right, guys. So let's get let's get Oliver a churro. All right. <laughs> yes, I think we could all come together to get Oliver a uh, best churro. <laughs> Those are hard to find too, by the way. <laughs> good churros good are hard to find. Oh, Most of them man. taste like cardboard. I mean, Disneyland oh. had some good ones when I was a kid, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, when you're a kid, any <laughs> churros can be good. <laughs> Sugar and cinnamon? Yeah, you're in. Right. Well, brother, thanks. Uh, thanks for being on our show again. Always love learning from you and talking to you. So thanks so much. No, I appreciate you guys giving me the uh, the opportunity to come on board, and uh, it's been fun. Good laughs. 
Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot, brother. Viewers and listeners, guys, thank you so much for being the best part of How About That Cigar Live. We're so grateful to you for watching live on Facebook and all the other places. Take a minute. Like we always say, please, it means so much to us when you click on the subscribe button and the bell and the like buttons and all, all the buttons. All the buttons. <laughs> click on all the buttons, unless it's for a virus. Don't click on those buttons. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if you would, make sure if you have questions for us, you can email us on the website, howaboutthatcigar.com. Follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You'll find us at HBT Cigar. And, of course, until we see you guys next time, burn cigars. Not bridges. Thanks, guys. Any comments, opinions, viewpoints, or statements presented or uttered by guests on the HBTC podcast, HBTC live video streams, and all other media from HBT Media LLC are solely those of the individual and do not necessarily represent the opinions or viewpoints of How About That Cigar or its parent company, HBT Media LLC, any of our advertising partners, or the premium cigar industry. The primary purpose of How About That Cigar is to entertain and to encourage activity and growth within the community of people who enjoy or want to learn about the enjoyment of premium 